Now, talking about entrepreneurship, I, I, you know, for me, I think entrepreneurship starts with the entrepreneurial spirit. And the entrepreneurial spirit is an attitude, it's a perspective to life. You know, and it's the antithesis of sort of, you know, the corporate sort of thing where you're know, working for a big corporation and things just disappear into the, into the lot, right? You know, whether it's expenses, whether it's contribution, whether it's anything, right? You know, big corporation. That's why even entrepreneurs, big corporations, they're talking about entrepreneurship where people are being entrepreneurial within large organizations. Because it's a spirit, it's an attitude. It's that ability to, you know, to, to um, tend something, you know, um, you know it's, 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 it's an ownership spirit, you know, and some of the Holy Scriptures talks about being a hireling, so being a shepherd. You know, when somebody is an entrepreneur, they learn to shepherd, they learn to look after them, because, you know, you find people who have all kinds of high-flying careers where they didn't bother about counting the payments and the costs, and then you go an entrepreneur, you suddenly realize that cash is king. When I When I trained them, I did my MBA many years ago, I remember the course I took on entrepreneurship, and the professor kept reminding us that cash is king. He said there's only one reason why business is bad. They run out of money. Everything passes through that door. Everybody has a long story of who they pay them or how the idea was too. And it doesn't matter what it is. But ultimately, they run out of cash. There are the expenses which usually are you know, quite predictable. Because you know the expenses you contract them. You can easily Anything you want, if you are prepared to pay people who sign the agreement with you. The other thing is actually generating the revenue. So what happens is that expenses match on relentlessly, and then the revenues are negotiating with you. Some people say, oh, no, no, this idea is great, but I'm not confident, whatever. But bottom line is that the cash is coming in, and ultimately, you find yourself running out of money. And so, entrepreneurs learn to realize that cash is key. So they, they, they become they're more frugal, they're more you know, they're almost um, clever, right, in the ability to stretch, stretch the cash, in the ability to work with other people's capital. In the and so in some respects, it was almost like I was singularly focused on trying to launch the business. And of course, gradually, it started to run into, you know, like, okay, I mean, I thought you were in the US, I thought you were in South Africa, I said, oh, actually, I've been coming quite a lot. And then gradually, I started to integrate back. But the first thing I did wasn't to rush to embrace society, because that's a major distraction, as you know. There's always stuff going on. But those things tend to challenge, and if you're not careful, come on, they're not to be Don't get me wrong, you still have to be connected. But it's a bit more strategic, and it's a bit more sensitive. And you certainly are aware of the distractions that society can impose on you. But I would say, by far, the most important quality of entrepreneurship is that can do it, that, that spirit, that attitude that is propelled by adversity. That person that you know fails and gets up and keeps going, and the willingness, the willingness to um, sacrifice today for to better tomorrow. What they call delayed gratification, which I'm sure you know about. I think by far the most important thing that's helped me to be a successful entrepreneur is people. Let me explain. You find that no entrepreneur really makes it without support. And that support will come from people who have mentored you. If you look at how we started our firm, it was the people who mentored me, who partnered with me, and they, and they gave me all their connections. I and mean, when I came back, Dick was a very well known person. Everybody knew him, he knew everybody. And just by going almost like his son everywhere, within a, year, a few years, those relationships became money. And, and I incredibly invited The second thing I want to talk about is. You know, just again back to this issue of attitude. And what I mean by attitude is, you know, both the humility and the wisdom. I'm, I'm, I'm very big on that in the sense of like, because life will throw things at you. How you manage them, how you deal with them is crucial. Great entrepreneurs, I'm sure you've had the expression, a like, crisis is, is too great an opportunity to waste. Great entrepreneurs are those who converted crises or dangers. I mean, every entrepreneur that is successful almost turned a setback into a setup for his success. You know, has to do with you know just being part of your community. I know I talk about conquering that, but let me talk about being part of your community in a different way. I have found that people who are successful at the of people, those who are their best, while they're singularly focused in what they're doing, they also have a perspective that builds a lot of people. They are able to build other forms of capital. You know, so you find that many of them have a track record of having done other things that are successful, have a track record of having helped people, and they're able to convert almost like other 
other forms of capital, what really into entrepreneurial capital. You know, and of course, what you hear about a lot is they're passionate, they're passionate about something, you could do it for free, maybe I've been doing it for free, and then suddenly, you know, you learn the ropes and eventually you can even launch a successful business. But what I found that helped me, when I came back, I was very passionate about making a contribution. You know, I had a sense of responsibility. I felt genuinely I had been fortunate. And if you know my background, you know I had been fortunate. I grew up in a village. My father was a Methodist minister. And he wasn't really a wealthy person. But somehow, at every stage, it's as if I got lucky and luckier. You know? So from that school, I went to a decent secondary school in the East. And from there, I started, you know, like I, you know, I did a switch career. I got to Lagos. You know, luckily got into our family. And at some point, I managed to move to HBS. And every, each one of those things, you just know that like, it's a privilege because it's not what I guess that chance. And being willing to give something back, actually in a counterintuitive way, helps your entrepreneurial career. It builds a lot of capital, relationship capital, goodwill. And I tell people, because when I negotiate that, I mean, people who know me, if you ask them, they'll tell you, you know, when it comes to probably, I was a tough, you know, sort of negotiator when I'm negotiating you know, with a business or trying to structure a deal. But the same people will tell you that they don't need and that there's a lot of goodwill there. You know, that's what when I was told, today is a very bright day, by the way. But I just said, somehow I have to come here, because you never know. Some of these people are the leaders of tomorrow. Let me come and sow a seed here. I'm sure someday it will germinate, you know. That's what I must come. 